Being a volunteer is an amazing feeling. It's from the heart. Being a volunteer is probably one of the most rewarding experiences anyone can have. It affects not only the people that you serve, but your own self. Being a volunteer is what makes me who I am. Being a volunteer is my life. 911, what is your emergency? My wife can't breathe. She has asthma and can't breathe. She needs help. They open doors into your home, your office, your car. They walk into your life and they save it. You don't know their names or where they work or why they even want to help. But at that moment when you need them, you're grateful they are there. These are the men and women of the New Jersey Volunteer Emergency Medical Services who devote their time, their knowledge, and their skills to serve you, your loved ones, and your community during an emergency. New Jersey has a proud and distinguished history of volunteerism. The men and women who comprise the Volunteer Emergency Medical Services throughout our state are dedicated to providing the best, most efficient, and effective medical services possible. They believe in giving back to their neighbors, their communities, and their state. They take pride in their service because they know what it takes. We're going to switch over to the stretcher, okay? One, two, three. How do they become volunteers? Some start early in high school by joining a cadet program at their local first aid squad. I was around 13. My brother started bringing me around the building because he volunteered at Princeton too. Um, and he started, me, started bringing me around there. And it was just a really cool place to be. All the people are really friendly and just watching what they do. And he would come home and tell stories. And it was just always something that I wanted to do. I came here hoping that I get a more intimate view of what goes on in this town and how the things work out and how emergency services work. So I just wanted to be more involved in that. I came into college not really knowing anything about how to function outside of you know, my home with my parents. And now I feel like I can deal with anything, any kind of stressful situation. To qualify, you must be 16 years old. That's what Caitlin Colmer did. She was in high school when she first became interested in volunteering. I decided I wanted to become an EMT and join the actual squad, and that's what I did, and I love it. Every once in a while, we'll get like the bad call where we'll rescue someone, and that's just the most amazing feeling in the world. Through becoming an EMT, through the ambulance squad, now I'm actually going to um, college to become a nurse. I have a wonderful experience. It's determining my entire life. I'm a student and an EMT. I'm a college student and an EMT. I'm a high school senior and soon to be an EMT. Tones go out, whether it's the middle of the day or the middle of the night, and you just completely stop what you're doing. You change your whole personality, you change your whole mood, and uh, you're just focused on what's going on. It's just that pure adrenaline rush from the start to the end of the call. For some volunteers, it's a family tradition. Officially, Doug Tobin has been a volunteer for 10 years. Unofficially, he was volunteering since he was a child. And I've been involved since I was seven with my mother and father, both in the ambulance corps. So we've been around for a while. I would go down to the building, I would help out, I would clean the equipment, I would get the equipment ready for the crews that were coming on, and basically just uh, watching and learning uh, growing up. Everybody works hand in hand with everybody and in a cool, calm, collective manner you are to go to the ambulance building, get in the ambulance, turn the lights and sirens on and uh, go to the patient's house and treat them for any type of illness or injury that they may have and comfort them, guide them, um, talk to them and transport them to the hospital. One, two, three, up. We're centered. Great. Okay. What you see out here and what we, we do as a team is incredible. I mean, every little bit helps. Even sitting there behind the desk or getting behind the ambulance and putting on the sirens or just holding somebody's hand when they really need it. You make a difference. You know, that's what it's all about. Started as a volunteer, uh, just always thought it'd be something cool to do. Signed up for my EMT class, got involved, and now I'm actually a professional EMT as well. So, sort of found my life's work. 
I feel like it makes me good at the rest of my life when whatever comes up and I have to deal quickly, um, problem solve, figure out what to do. Those are skills that are important for your whole life, not just for being an EMT. There's nothing else like helping other people. And, you know, especially in my hometown and, and coming back and being able to help them out, it's great. Um, you get to do fun stuff, cut cars apart. Dr. Mark Merlin began helping others when he was 14 years old by taking a standard first aid course at summer camp. Okay. If you're young, it's an amazing experience because you're learning so much on a regular basis. For me, this was my introduction to medicine. Uh, for me, this really led to my career path, which I dedicated to uh, pre-hospital care in, in the state of New Jersey. There are many types of volunteers. There are people who do it for their entire career. There are people who do it for a couple of years. I think whatever you can give is what's important. You're helping your community, and how many people can say that? So I'm going to take your blood pressure, okay? How are you feeling? Oh, your hands are chilly. Dr. Stephen Vetrano continued his commitment to volunteerism from medical school to the present. I'm very, very proud to, to still be an EMT, that my roots are in the pre-hospital community. I think the, the perfect volunteer is, is someone that's uh, well-motivated. Good bedside manner, I guess, is the best way to put it, to know um, when someone's sick or not sick, to stay and play on the scene and take care of them, or to say, we've got to get to the hospital right now. Being in the hospital, it's difficult to imagine what's going on out on the street. Having our, our pre-hospital uh, personnel uh, well-trained in, in what they do is a benefit for not only the patient, but for us in the hospital as well. One, two, three. As a 20-year veteran, Mary DiStefano is proud of her commitment to volunteerism and knows what it takes to be a good EMT. Someone who's willing to commit some time, someone who truly cares about other people, someone who's interested in working with others, a team player, someone who's interested in bringing their skills to the table. There's also the business of running the organization, so it's really nice to have people who have talents in other fields. I'm a 911 dispatcher. I'm an astrophysicist. I'm a systems engineer. I'm an athletic trainer. Classical musician. Guidance counselor. An occupational therapist. And an EMT. Do you remember hitting your Guys, needle? leave the stretcher yeah. out. Okay. Bring me a long board and collar, okay? You can learn some skills that are valuable in your own life. You can give back to your community. You can meet some great new friends. And heck, you can drive with lights and sirens. Nikisha Mitchell was not certain why she joined her local first aid squad, but she's glad she did. I don't know what made me want to become a volunteer. I'm a big medical field fanatic, so I'm like, let me give it a try, see how it works out. Maybe I'll like it. But I absolutely love it. What you learn is valuable, regardless of what you're doing with yourself. Those skills are just uh, priceless. <laughs> but when there isn't a price attached to it, when you're doing it, it comes from you. It comes from your heart. It's a feeling that no amount of money could give you. You're so proud. You're so satisfied. You're so happy with yourself because I made a difference. I helped somebody. I just saved a life. So for that, volunteer. Somebody help him, please. Help my husband. Somebody hit us. I wanted to see what it was like to uh, get to take care of people and um, just what it was like to volunteer and be in the medical field. I was interested in medicine and I often have a pursuit of looking for medical school and I heard this is a gold star in applications but just other than that I also enjoy helping people. I began this because I wanted to get into community service, do something. I looked at a number of different things and felt that my skills would be best utilized here rather than at the fire department or volunteering at the hospital. One of the first things I think of is what can be the, the worst case scenario and what are we going to be able to do to help that person get to the hospital alive. Yana Yasunaliets knows what it feels like to make a difference. New to her neighborhood, she joined to get to know her community. I was taking a walk around a new town which we had just moved to and I saw an ambulance flying by. So I went and asked if I can join um, just so I can get to know the town. I absolutely adore 
being able to participate in my community. It's a very rare type of situation where you can help a person in need and you make a difference in their life and possibly save their life. I think that being an EMT has absolutely changed my life. It's a great group of people to be involved in on top of all the wonderful things that you end up doing. As a result of me being an EMT, I've decided to be a doctor. Bill Rosen has been a volunteer for 23 years. It's even more interesting in a very small community where I uh, came from. Uh, most of the people you serve, you know. To open the door and have them see someone they know from town there to help, it's very gratifying to both sides. There are a lot of things that one can do on a volunteer first aid squad, and often we are looking for someone to do the financial record, someone to rebuild the member's room, someone to help us with fund drives. There are so many ways that one can help through volunteerism. Brian Gould's life changed when his daughter convinced him to join her as a volunteer at their local rescue squad. When you join a rescue squad or, or, or first aid squad, it becomes your family. You have no choice but to get closer to those people. I have 50 people I can count on for anything. The, the people that do it are in all kinds of professions. And we have doctors, quite a few nurses, medical professionals, but then there are people like me, computer programmers. We have teachers. We have people that are professional firefighters. I was definitely a different person before I got into becoming a volunteer emergency medical technician. I was your typical nerdy person who loved working on the computer. To me, it's made me much more of a people person. I'm much happier now than I ever was. Shock advised. All right, so we found a rhythm that's a shock little rhythm, which means it's going to deliver a shock. Uh, communities don't realize what a need there is for EMS, and especially volunteer EMS. We're looking for a wide variety of people. The age constraints are as follows. You have to be a minimum age of 16 to take the EMT course. Beyond that, there is no restriction. Training for an EMT in New Jersey requires you to take an EMT course, which is a basic EMT course of 120 hours. In the 120 hours, you cover a number of things that will help you be prepared to take care of anyone in the field. In addition to that, we uh, have a CPR course that you're required to take, which is a professional CPR course. If you haven't received the training, many of the volunteer first aid squads will allow you to join. Once you've joined, then they will help you take the training. And by joining the first aid squad first, you can get the training for free. It's really important that if you are looking to help in your community, that you volunteer. And most of all, it is the feeling that you've actually helped somebody. And that's the really the most important thing. To become part of a volunteer emergency medical services team, call the New Jersey Department of Health and Senior Services Office of EMS at 866-222-5105. Let New Jersey Volunteer EMS open doors for you.